How's it going guys? Today I wanted to share with you this really cool open source project that I just recently found out about. I'm frankly pretty surprised that I haven't heard about it before and that is the CinePy. So this is an open source cinema camera that you build using a Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty sure that you have to use a Raspberry Pi 4 or uh, something that's got higher specifications than that because um, well, I think for the data rates with recording, I don't think the lower end Raspberry Pis are really going to be compatible. Maybe with a really low end camera, it would be. Um, but yeah, this is a cinema camera, like a professional grade camera that you can build yourself using open source hardware, you know, DIY hardware and open source software. And so we've got some of the features here. It's using a Super 8 sized sensor from, so that's a Sony IMX 477. Uh, and you can also put other sensors in this that I've you know been looking into this a little bit, like reading on uh, some of the Raspberry Pi forums, which I'll show you guys as well. Uh, but you, know, you can change sensors on this thing. Um, it supports 12-bit cinema DNG recording. Uh, you've got a four inch high res touchscreen interface, which that's going to be modular as well. Um, you've got an internal high capacity battery. I'm sure that's modular too. You can probably put bigger batteries in there. Uh, let's see, USB 3.0 external SSD recording. This is probably um, modular too, because I see that there's an ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi, which I'm pretty sure is gigabit ethernet. So, you know, you can probably do um, pretty sure you can do full HD over a, you know, gigabit data line, uh, probably just not with a terribly high frame rate, but maybe 30 FPS would work. Uh, so let's see, where else were we? 40 millimeter Noctua cooling system, which again, that's going to be modular as well. Uh, maybe you could even water cool it, you know, and have a loop going somewhere else if you needed it to be extra super quiet. Uh, but yeah, here's the build guide for it. And it's actually surprisingly very, very easy to build this. The, you know, it looks really intimidating, but reading through this build guide, the most complicated thing that you really have to do is solder some wires. Um, and they're even hoping one day, like they say here, future designs will explore the use of more highly refined processes such as consolidating many of the external components onto a single custom design PCB in the familiar Raspberry Pi hat form factor. So eventually you're not even gonna have to, you know, get out a soldering nail and deal with doing that stuff. But if we take a look at the parts list here to build it, so of course, a Raspberry Pi, um, or which wow are they really 35 to 75 dollars again hang on i gotta i gotta check this real quick um yeah looks like it is yeah and that's the 8 gig model for 75 dollars all right well it's good to see that the price of our pies have come down um but yeah that's 75 dollars so the raspberry pi hq camera which um, let's see, does this have the specifications real quick? Um, I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think it's on here, but I was reading up on this camera earlier, and I'm pretty sure it's a 4K camera that can do, I think, up to 50 FPS. So again, like that's really good. That's definitely going to be good enough to do uh, professional level, in, in my opinion, professional level level cinema. I mean, I do YouTube videos, so you know, I know a little bit about video, but not necessarily on that level. But we're going to take a look at some videos in a minute that were actually shot with this thing. And you tell me whether or not you think it's professional level. But all of uh, these parts added together, and then these things here that aren't listed are just super cheap. I mean, they're literally like a dollar or less than a dollar. Um, or I think for the um, knock to a fan, I think this is like, um, let's see, I think it's like $17 or so. But yeah, it's not very expensive to build this out. I think with all the parts listed here, you're looking at about $250, maybe $300 um, to assemble this camera. And actually I have a video here from 
CinePie, so definitely make sure you subscribe to their channel uh, showing the hands-on camera. I mean, it's it's a good looking camera too. This um, this case is 3D printed, and I'm pretty sure that you can download the specifications, and and they have details on here um, about the materials that you want for the yeah. Here we go for the 3D printing. Uh, so here are the materials that they recommend using for that. But of course. You could go higher end with this, or you could go, you could do a different design. I mean, if you're 3D printing the case for your camera, literally anything is possible. I mean, it's such a good looking camera too. Like I, I would imagine, you know, if you were to bust this thing out amongst some film nerds that have their Sony cameras or their Canon cameras, I don't think they can really turn their nose up at you. I mean, it looks good. It's not a janky looking camera. And again, you could get larger viewfinders if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure that they make a couple different viewfinders that are compatible with the Raspberry Pi. I mean, this looks really good, and again, with the cost of it, I might actually try to order these parts and see if I can build one of these myself. Because um, let's take a look at some video that's actually shot with this camera now. So this is also on CinePie's channel, Ocean Odyssey. I mean, it looks really nice. Like, this is probably good enough, um, quality-wise, to be on, like, the TVs that you would see in a Best Buy or a Walmart when they have their, uh, what was it called in Best Buy? The Magnolia TVs when they're in kind of the little theater room setting? Let this run on it. There's no reason to pay a whole bunch of money to, you know, Sony or whatever to have them send someone out with their fancy camera to do this. You could do it with open source hardware, open source software. And here's um, another one. So this is uh, made by School Post, but he said that he was using, it might even be in the description here. Um, okay, so it looks like it's broken down. Some of it is filmed with a Blackmagic pocket cinema camera, about 50%, but 40% of it is filmed with the CinePi version 2. I don't know if he necessarily shows us, but again, this is, uh, I mean, this is like we're watching a movie right now, guys. Someone passed the popcorn. Time. The resource desired by both the moral and by the immoral alike. All right, I don't know if this is, a. Uh copywritten or not, so we're not going to watch uh, too much further past the fancy German car, but I mean, are you not impressed by this? This is made with a fully open source camera. Okay, here's another one. Um, it looks like, yeah, so this was entirely shot using the CinePie 2K. Okay, so it's high quality, guys. I mean, look, uh, well, it looks like we could do 4K in, in Vimeo, but um, anyway, it's done in its full frame mode. Yeah, using the entire sensors. So that's 2028 by 1520. Graded and edited in Resolve 17. So Resolve, while Resolve is not open source, I will mention this, it runs on Linux. Um, you can run DaVinci Resolve on pretty much any Linux distro. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure it has certain um, library dependencies and stuff, but I don't think it has like a dependency on system D or anything like that. Um, but anyway, the day at the range. I mean, come on. This is good quality stuff and let's, let's move me out the way.
I mean, this could very easily be the opening scene to a movie, to a TV show. I mean, just professional gray B-roll. This is legit. This is a really, really legit camera. So here's the um, Raspberry Pi forums where they were talking about it a bit more. So look at this. This is another... I mean, this... If, if you didn't think that this other one looked legit, I mean, okay, look. This one here... That's one thing, right? But this is what it could be. And you can reuse so many of these components. You can use the same Raspberry Pi... Um, you can probably use the same image sensor. I'm not sure if he mentions here which image sensor he uses. Um, short test, 3D printed, C mount, lens mount. Yeah, I think this is using the same sensor. Uh, different lens, which in the world of you know photography and, and professional video, you've got uh, different lenses. Like that's kind of the only thing that... Um, is really that modular with these cameras and sometimes the viewfinders are too like sometimes you know viewfinders and you can plug in microphones and stuff like that but you can't deconstruct your cameras and use a cpu from one and the image sensor from another and then rebuild it into a, a sony camera or a canon camera at least as far as i'm aware i mean i'm not that much of a video nerd but i don't think that's a thing now it is with this Raspberry Pi camera. And there is another Raspberry Pi coming out soon, or it might have already come out, the Raspberry Pi 5. So that's going to, like, if there's any um, data limitations, I think I might have read uh, somewhere on these forums or somewhere else that the current limitation is this 2028 by 1520 at 50 frames per second. But that might get bumped up a bit with the newer Raspberry Pi that comes out, uh, newer sensors that come out. Like I think um, it might actually be in this thread. Um, I'm not gonna try to find exactly where they quoted it, but somewhere in this um, thread about the Cine camera, the Raspberry Pi Cine camera, they said that they were testing the image sensor from this camera here, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So <clears throat> you've got even higher resolution that's possible with this. Um, maybe, uh, you know, better. I think it's also a larger sensor, so that's going to just give you better overall quality with your photos and with your videos. So once you're able to get that sensor, and the um, Raspberry Pi 5 comes out, you could upgrade your uh, CinePi version 2, maybe we'll call that like a CinePi version 3, but you don't have to buy a whole new camera. You don't have to spend $1,295 like you would if you were buying a new proprietary camera. Cause see, when new cameras come out, like when Sony or, or Blackmagic or whoever is making these um, new cameras, they might just have, you know, one might have a larger viewfinder, or one might just have a larger image sensor. One might be able to take larger batteries, something like that. And instead of being able to get all of that in one camera, instead of saying, hey, I want to use the battery pack from this camera on that camera, you can't do that with this, but you can do that with the open source hardware. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that I'm really, really impressed by. Um, definitely follow CinePie on YouTube and follow this project on GitHub. If you're able to uh, help them contribute to the project, there's several different repositories that are um, associated with it. Yeah, so here's all the different libraries and stuff like that. Um, let's see, libcamera. And this is actually something, a camera library for Linux, Android, and Chrome OS. So yeah, if you're able to help them out with that, this, this is something that's really, really impressive because um, <laughs> being able to use a, a camera like this is probably going to save people a whole lot of money because, again, like I said, paying all this money for cameras where one generation of a camera is just going to give you realistically like one or two hundred dollars worth of upgrades instead of having to pay a thousand dollars for that you could just pay the one or two hundred dollars and 
add those upgrades to your CinePy camera. So check out the project and come and find it. Shirts are available on base.win. As always, 10% discount store wide when you're using Monero XMR. Like and comment, tag the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great day.